Shadows, a basic item of computer graphics to bring a little more realism to a rendered scene. Ray tracing shadows are very easy to understand. After a ray hits an object, a new ray is cast in the direction of a light source. If an object blocks the ray, then there's shadow. But how are they created in traditional rasterization? Here it doesn't make much sense to cast rays, as it is a costly process. So more efficient approaches are generally used. One of them is the creation of shadow maps which I decided to apply in my 3D graphics engine in Python. The basic idea is relatively simple. We will consider the light source as a camera, project the points relative to this camera and instead of rendering a frame, calculate only the depths, the same way as this done with the Z buffer. From the light point of view, everything that is rendered is illuminated, so whatever doesn't appear there is because it is in the shadow. When rendering the real frame, we will retrieve the depth information relative to the light source for each pixel. And if the value is bigger than the one in the shadow map, it means that it is in the shadow. Before projecting the points, I need to define a light camera, which I will make in a similar way to the normal camera, with the coordinates X, Y and Z for the position and two rotations for the direction. To make things more interesting, I made the light position vary with time, so we have dynamic shadows. For the position, I will define a value far away from all objects, in the middle of the sky. And the rotation angles are calculated according to the position and rotation of the camera, pointing to a position a little ahead of it, so it follows the camera. Then I can use the same function for projecting points in the normal view for the shadows, but I need to adjust the field of view, because otherwise the projection will be too small, because of the large distance to the light. So I made a small change that adjusts the field of view according to the distance to the camera. After projecting the points, we need to render the shadow map. We could use the same function that renders the frames, but there are several things that are done that are not necessary for shadows, as we only want the depth values. So I made a separate function, a bit more optimized, just to calculate the depths and save it in a shadow map. Then, when rendering the frame itself, I need to interpolate together the values projected to the light camera to recover the shadow from the shadow mapping, and also interpolate the depth value in relation to the light, to compare with the shadow map value. If the depth is larger than the stored value, it means that there is some object blocking the light, so we apply shading to that pixel. This way we get shadows, but we can notice a problem with some surfaces, which is known as shadow acne, because it appears like several black dots in the surface. This happens because of the lack of precision in the shadow mapping, where we have a pixel in the shadow map that corresponds to several pixels in the frame. This makes them fail sometimes in the depth test. To try to alleviate this problem, we can apply an offset to the depth values. But I found even better results when using front face culling for the shadow map. As there are only shadows, it makes no difference if we are looking for the front or the back faces. But the back faces have the advantage of drawing less triangles and the depth difference is bigger, significantly reducing the acne. Another issue is the pixelated aspect of shadows. To improve this, we can smooth the edges, taking several samples and calculating the average. The performance suffers a lot with the shadows implementation. That happens mainly because we need to check each pixel individually, to know if it is or not in the shadow, breaking the optimizations that I had implemented for models without textures. So to implement a game with this engine, I would probably ditch the shadows and maybe even have to reduce the resolution and the amount of models. I still want to test some simple logic for animations and interactions between objects, like collisions. For now, I only create a simple logic to rotate, scale and translate the objects. Later on, I intend to start using OpenGL to speed up the rendering and have a more fluid experience, so we can explore more advanced effects and stuff. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see a little more about projection or rendering of triangles, take a look at my previous videos. Thanks for watching and I see you in next time.